Welcome to our free-to-play Iron Man guide. This guide also contains methods for which a non-Iron Man account can participate in. We will be covering melee, magic, range, and prayer. This guide contains what weapons, armors, and accessories you should be using, and how to obtain them. Now without further ado, we move on to the melee section of the guide. Enjoy. Suggest so leveling up mining and smithing so you can smith your own weapons because you can go all the way up to your 50 rune. It's much cheaper than buying them at stores, and if you're an Iron Man, gold is everything in free to play. If you don't want to smith your own weapons, you can obtain tier 6 swords from the quest Blood Pack, which can be used between level 1 and 30 attack and strength. You can upgrade to tier 10, 20, 30, and 40 at the Varrock Sword Shop, which is located in Varrock, just east of the fountain located in the town square. Now, if you completed the Dragon Slayer quest, you can head over to Scavo's Rune Store and pick up tier 50 Rune. Now, the only boss in free to play that I suggest you attack is Holotuf. He's a goblin boss who appears in goblin raids. If you pay attention to public chat, Occasionally, it will say a goblin raid is located somewhere in the free-to-play area. If you head to that site, defeat all the goblins, you will have the opportunity to attack Holotuf, who can drop a rare item, which is a T-55 Gut Raider Axe. This is the strongest weapon outside of the wilderness and dungeoneering. In regards to the dungeoneering T-55 Gravite Weaponry, they require 45 dungeoneering to buy and 55 attack to wield. The two-hander only cost 40,000 dungeoning tokens and the main and offhand weapons cost 60,000 dungeoning tokens together. And if you do plan on upgrading the pay-to-play at a later date, I suggest you don't buy Gravite as it's a waste of dungeoning tokens. They can go to better use like a Charming Imp or Bone Crusher. Now if you don't want to smith your own armor, you can head over to Horvik's Armor Shop which is located in Varrock just northeast of the fountain of Varrock's town square and you can get tier 10 to tier 40 armor here. Now if you completed the Dragon Slayer quest, you can head over to Scavo's Rune Shore, which gives you tier 50 rune. And the boss Holotuf also drops a tier 55 gut raider plate body and shield. The plate body is considered power armor, which increases your minimum and maximum damage. This is the strongest plate body you can wield in free to play, and I highly suggest getting it if you have the time to set aside to boss. Now the easiest amulet to get in free to play is the amulet of defense. It requires 31 crafting and 27 magic to make using an emerald, a gold bar, and ball of wool. Or you can pick it up from corpse archers, corpse mages, or scoplins, which are located in the Ludwig Catacombs, which requires the quest Blood Pack. The next strongest amulet you can get is the Brawler's Jab Necklace, which provides a bonus of plus 13. Requires 30 attack and 30 dungeon ring to purchase for 6,500 dungeon ring tokens. The next dungeon ring necklace you can buy is the Brawler's Hook Necklace, which you can buy for 15,500 dungeon ring tokens. Requires 50 attack and 50 dungeon ring to purchase. Gives a bonus of 24. This is the strongest amulet in free to play for melee. I highly suggest you pick it up if you are staying in free-to-play for a long period of time. Now the amulet is strength as an Iron Man in free-to-play. You require 50 crafting and 49 magic to make using a ruby, gold bar and a ball of wool. There are two capes you can get in free-to-play for melee. One of them is a team cape which you can pick up from any cape merchant throughout the wilderness. If you're planning on buying one of these capes, I suggest you unequip all your items and head out to the cape merchant and purchase whichever one you want. As you at risk the parkers, you won't lose anything if you die. Technically the easiest cape you can pick up is the Bloodstorm Drake. If you head to the abandoned Bertha at mine, they are dropped by Troll Chuckers there. That provides a bonus of 1.5 strength. Now there are two rings you can pick up in free to play that are worthwhile. The first one is the Explorer's Ring 3, the second is the Explorer's Ring 4, which require the Lumbridge medium tasks or hard tasks respectively provides a strength bonus of 5 or 10. I suggest you complete the Lumbridge medium tasks as these are quite low level and very simple to complete. As the Lumbridge hard tasks are a little bit higher, it will take you a lot longer to get the Explorer's Ring 4 than a 3, 
if you're looking at just immediate gain, I suggest you pick up the Slaughter's Ring 3 at bare minimum. Since you'll be using Legacy Combat from levels 1 to 30, I suggest using Daggers, Maces or Scimitars as they provide the attack speed of fastest. As you'll be mostly one-hitting monsters in the catacombs, the faster weapons mean you'll get more experience. Your first target is going to be Warp Cockroaches. I suggest staying here between 1 and 30 attack and strength. They're located in the Lumbridge Catacombs. The quest requirement for this is Blood Pact. Now I suggest you use Legacy here, and you do not need food as they barely hit you. You are one hitting them, the weakness really doesn't matter. And I suggest you use Jeweled Weapon, as their attack speed bonus severely increases your experience rates. I managed to obtain about 46,000 experience per hour using Legacy, and 34,000 experience per hour using Evolution of Combat. Now the experience per hour highly depends on the user input. Now I tested these rates between level 1 and 30, attack and strength, using these swords, and these are the rates I've achieved. If you upgrade to tier 10 and tier 20 iron or steel, you'll have a higher experience per hour, though it is not necessary, as you one hit using these swords, generally after 10 strength. Between 30 and 50 attack and strength is to head over to the Stronghold of Security Level 3, which is located in the Barabaran Outpost. Your target would be Giant Spiders, which have a combat level of 39, and I suggest using Evolution of Combat here. Now I suggest you bring food here, Trout or Salmon should do, but I suggest bringing something better like Lobsters. Their weakness is Crush Weapons, so bring dual wield Maces or Warhammers, and they provide 121 experience per kill. Now using Mithril, between 30 and 40 attack and strength, I managed to obtain 50,000 experience per hour using Legacy and 60,000 experience per hour using Evolution of Combat and AoE abilities. So the only AoE ability that you can use in free to play at low levels is Flurry, which you can use off cooldown when you can. It attacks multiple spiders around you and does a small percentage of damage to the main target and outer targets. I managed to obtain 62,000 experience per hour using Legacy and 71,000 experience per hour using Evolution of Combat here. As you can tell, it's a huge increase of experience over Mithril. So these are pretty decent rates at this level. Now, using Evolution of Combat, these experience rates are assuming you're killing the smaller spiders that are surrounding you when you use your AoE abilities when targeting the giant spiders. Now for 50 plus attack and strength, I suggest you head over to Karamajar Island Dungeon. Your target would be Daily Red Spiders, which have a combat level of 95. Now I suggest you use Evolution of Combat here, purely because of the regenerate ability, though you can use Lobsters or something better, and Bank. So the weakness for these spiders is Crush Weapons, just like in real life. So bring your dual wield Maces and Warhammers. Now you can obtain 530 experience per kill, which provides about 170,000 experience per hour using Legacy and Lobsters and Banking. So the rates for Legacy are much higher than Evolution of Combat, though Evolution of Combat provides better abilities and survivability over Legacy. You don't have to bank as much. And if you're lazy like me, banking is a pain, so I just stuck to Evolution of Combat. Now before we start off the range section of the guard, I highly suggest you fletch your own ammunition as obtaining them from shops is very time consuming as they only have a small supply and you'd have to stock up over days, even weeks, to get a decent horde of arrows and bolts. Now the first weapon I suggest you use is the Kale's Charge Bow, which is tier 6. You can obtain this from the Blood Pack quest and tier 20 weaponry if you'd like for faster experience rates but the chaos charge bow is quite sufficient so i suggest just using that until 1 to 30. in dungeon ring tokens you can purchase a shield bow site which requires 45 range 45 defense and 45 dungeoneering to use you attach this site to a maple shield bow which increases its tier to 45 and it becomes the fourth strongest free to play bow for you to use if you've completed the quest Dragon Slayer, you can head over to Valene's Shop of Champions and pick up a tier 50 magic short bow with rune arrows. And heading back to Dungeoneering, if you use that shield bow site on a magic shield bow, it increases the tier to 55 and becomes tie for the strongest weapon in free to play. With the benefits of having extended range over gravite weaponry, 
is very beneficial to use. Now you can also pick up crossbows in free to play by heading into the crossbow shop which is located in the Dwarven Mine in Falador. T30 and 40 animate crossbows here as well as the bolts. And again if you have the Dragon Slayer quest completed you can head over to our Velane Shop of Champions to pick up T50 rune crossbows and bolts. In regards to the dungeon ring, you can pick up some tier 55 grab out weaponry, which require 45 dungeon ring to buy and 55 range to wield. It costs 40,000 dungeon ring tokens for a two handed weapon and 60,000 dungeon ring tokens for a main hand and off hand weapon. I only suggest upgrading to grab out if you don't plan on going pay to play in the future, as the dungeon ring tokens can go to something better in pay to play. The maple and magic shield both cited provide the longest attack range of nine tiles as well as giving the user access to defensive abilities that help with survival and healing. And as a side note, is more ammo activity to use short bows and arrows rather than crossbows and bolts, as the fletching level of arrows is much lower than bolts. Now you can craft your own armor, or you can obtain them from Lowe's Archery Emporium. They sell tier 10 to tier 40 armor there, and Valiant Shop of Champions sells tier 50, but requires the Dragon Slayer quest completion. Now with ranged armor, you don't actually need a ranged level to be able to equip these armor. You can have level 1 range and 50 defense, but you can still equip the blue Dragonite armor as long as you have 50 defense. Now with accessories and dungeoneering, you pick up the amulet of defense quite easily, which is dropped by corpse archers, corpse mages, or scoblins. Or you can craft it yourself using an emerald, a gold bar, and a ball of wool with 31 crafting and 27 magic to enchant it. If you have done some dungeoneering, you can pick up either the Farsight Quickshots Necklace or the Farsight Snapshot Necklace for the respective range bonuses of 13 and 24. Or if you prefer not to do dungeoneering, you can do the quest Imp Catcher, which gives you a quest reward of an Amulet of Accuracy, which provides a range bonus of 16. There are two capes you can obtain in free to play. One is the Team Cape, which provides a range bonus of 1. It can be bought via any Wilderness Cape Merchants. Or if you head over to the abandoned Berthop mine and kill troll shamans, you have a chance of obtaining the arrow storm drape, which gives a slightly larger range bonus. Now if you complete the medium hard lumberage task, or as otherwise known as the achievement diaries, you can pick up the explorer's ring 3 and 4, which will provide a range bonus of 5 and 10. Now the medium tasks are quite easy to complete, and the hard tasks are much harder, so I suggest at least picking up the medium ring. From levels 1 to 30 range, I suggest two methods. You can either go to the Lumbage Catacombs, which requires the quest Blood Pack. Your target will be Warp Cockroaches, and I suggest you use Evolution of Combat. Now using the Chaos Charge Bow, which you obtain from this quest, you can easily obtain up to 30,000 experience per hour using Legacy, or 35 experience per hour using Evolution of Combat. Now I use this bow from levels 1 to 30, and I was easily able to obtain these experience rates continuously. Another option from level 1 to 50 range, I suggest you head to Abandoned Birth at Mine and kill Troll Shamans using the Evolution of Combat. I was easily able to obtain 53,000 experience per hour using EOC and not picking up any of the drops. Now I do not suggest not picking up the drops as the gum leaves and bones they drop as well as some other items are very beneficial later on. You probably expect about 40,000 experience per hour if you bank these items. Now for level 30 to 50 range, you can head back into the Lumbridge Catacombs and kill Corpse Mages using Evolution of Combat. Now while the experience rate for these are lower than anything else in this section of the guard, I suggest killing these as they drop Feathers, Bones, Amulet of Defense, as well as some other items that are very beneficial in free to play. Now from 30 to 50 range, if you head over the Karamajar Island Dungeon and attack Lesser Demons, which have a combat level of 70, using Evolution of Combat, and bringing food, pops is preferred, and abusing their weaknesses which is bolts, you can easily obtain around 50,000 experience per hour using Legacy, or 44,000 experience per hour using Evolution of Combat. Now these rates were achieved using just Mithril crossbows and bolts. Now I only suggest using Legacy for the high experience rate if you have a vast amount of bolts to spare, as you consume bolts quite rapidly using Legacy. Now from 30 to 50 range, you can head over to the Stronghold of Security level 3, which is the green dungeon. You can kill a Table Pond, which have combat level 53, while using the Evolution of Combat. Now food is required here, and I suggest you bring the lobsters. Their weakness is bolts, so bring crossbows and bolts. Their experience is 190 experience per kill, 
Now the experience rates here vary. I was able to achieve 40,000 plus experience per hour using Legacy and Mithril Crossbows, while I was able to obtain slightly more experience per hour using Evolution of Combat and Mithril Crossbows. Now, I also test using a stronger weapon, which is a U shortbow and adamant arrows, just to test what the experience rates will be with using a non-weakness weapon. And as you can tell, the experience rates are quite similar, if not identical. So this shows you the chromat triangle and why you should abuse their weaknesses. Now for 50 plus range, I suggest you head out to Karamajar Island Dungeon, attack lesser demons which have combat level of 70, using the evolution of combat. Now the weakness is bolts, so I suggest using Grun Crossbows. I was easily able to obtain 84,000 experience per hour using evolution of combat using Grun Crossbows. So compared to using Mythal Crossbows, evolution of combat is actually faster as you obtain stronger abilities in evolution of combat at later levels. Now another option for 50 plus range is the Karamajar Island Dungeon again. Your target will be Deadly Red Spiders this time, while using Evolution of Combat. And I highly suggest you bring food, lobsters preferred, and use whatever ranged weapon you prefer as well, as the monster isn't weak to range. Now you can use whatever weapon you prefer, as the monster isn't weak to any ranged styles. You can obtain 530 experience per kill killing these spiders. So I was able to achieve 95,000 experience per hour using Legacy and Evolution of Combat. So you can use whatever style you, you want, but I would suggest using Evolution of Combat as you use less bolts or arrows. Now for the magic section of this guard, I suggest you complete the quest Blood Pack and obtain Caitlyn's Staff, which is a tier 6 weapon, which you'll be using from levels 1 to 30 magic. If you prefer to upgrade to tier 10 and tier 20 on along the way, or obtain tier 30 when you get 30 magic, you can head over to Betty's Magic Emporium, which is located in Port Serum, just north of the Lodestone. Now if you do Dungeoneering, you can pick up three separate staffs or an offhand weapon here. The first one being a tier 45 War Staff, which requires 45 Dungeon Ring to buy and 45 magic to wield. This staff only costs 10,000 Dungeon Ring tokens, now it's quite easy to obtain. The next strongest weapon is the tier 48 Team of Frost, which requires 43,000 dungeon ring tokens and is considered an offhand item. Now this item gives infinite water runes, so it is very useful in combination with a tier 50 wand at later dates if you are planning on using water spells. Now if you completed the quest Dragon Slayer, you head over to Marvelous Mysticeam, who has tier 50 mystic wands and orbs for sale. Going back to Dungeoneering, you can pick up tier 53 Nature Staff, which only costs 12,500 Dungeoneering tokens and requires 52 Dungeoneering to buy and 53 Magic to wield. Now this staff is often considered the most powerful free to play staff available, as not only does it give you a benefit of obtaining Nature Rooms when alking, it's a very cheap staff to obtain. The strongest magic weapon you can obtain in free to play is the tier 55 Gravite Staff, which requires 45 Dungeon Ring to buy and 55 magic to wield, and only costs 40,000 Dungeon Ring tokens. Now, as I've suggested earlier in the guide, only buy Gravite weapons if you don't plan on upgrading to pay to play at a later date, as the Dungeon Ring tokens can go to much more useful items like the Charming Imp and Bone Crusher. And runes are easily purchased at any magic store. While using the evolution of combat, you actually don't use that many runes, so you can easily last hours without going through a large quantity. Now you can craft your own armor, or you can head over to Betty's Magic Emporium, who sells tier 10 to tier 30 armor. Now Betty's Magic Emporium is located in Port Serum, just north of the Lodestone. You can pick up tier 50 Mystic Armor if you completed the quest Dragon Slayer, and head over to Marvelous Mysticeum, and it's located in the Champion's Guild just west of the Ferric Lodestone. So the accessories that I recommend to obtain is the Amulet of Defense. This is quite easily obtained from Corpse Archers, Corpse Mages, or Scoblins. Or you can craft one yourself with 31 crafting and 27 magic to enchant it using an emerald, a gold bar, and wall of wool. The next amulet that I suggest you pick up, which is in my opinion the best free to play amulet that you can get, apart from Dungeoneering, is the Amulet of Magic, which is dropped as a rare drop from Scoblins or Warp Bats. You can also craft yourself one at 24 crafting and 7 magic to enchant it, using a sapphire, gold bar and a ball of wool. 
Now, in regards to Dungeoneering, there's two necklaces you can purchase, one of them being the Arcane Pulse, the other one being the Arcane Blast, which give respective magic bonuses of 13 and 24. The Arcane Blast necklace is considered the strongest free-to-play amulet in the game, and only costs 15,500 Dungeoneering tokens. I highly suggest you pick this up if you're sticking around in free-to-play. There are two capes you can obtain in free-to-play, one being the Team Cape, which you can pick up in the wilderness from any cape merchant, gives a magic bonus of 1, or you can pick up the Spellstorm Drape which gives a magic bonus slightly higher, which is dropped by Troll Brutes, which are located in the abandoned Berthrop mine, just north of the Lodestone. Now in regards to Dungeoneering, you can pick up a T55 Graphite Weapon, which requires 45 Dungeoneering to buy. Now there are two methods that I suggest you do from levels 1 to 30 Mage, one of them being in the Lumbridge Catacombs, which requires the quest Blood Pact, the target would be Warp Cockroaches, and you'll be using Evolution of Combat. These give 33 experience per kill, and up to 40,000 experience per hour using Evolution of Combat. Now these guys drop some very useful items like Feathers, Runes, and Ore Spirits. The next method from 1 to 30 Mage, I suggest you head to the Abandoned Birth Up Mine and kill Troll Brutes using Evolution of Combat. I was able to obtain about 43,000 experience per hour using Evolution of Combat, and I wasn't banking. Now I do suggest banking, so your experience rates would be significantly lower, probably about 30 to 35,000 experience per hour, but the rewards outweigh the experience, in my opinion, as you can get gum leaves, bones, several other items that are beneficial to you. Now from level 30 to 50 mage, I suggest you head back into the Lumbridge Catacombs, and your target will be Scoblins this time. I suggest you use an Evolution of Combat, and I suggest you use Water Spells for the Combat Weakness. Now I tested these raids from 30 to 50 mage using a Batwing wand and book. I was able to achieve 50,000 experience plus using evolution of combat, utilizing abilities like Dragon Breath and Detonate. And at 45 magic, when you unlock the ability Chain, I was able to increase my experience rate to 63,000 experience per hour. When you are using evolution of combat and utilizing AOE spells or area effect, I highly suggest target a monster, do damage to it, and then target another monster and repeat until you get a large amount of monsters around you and utilize abilities like Dragon Breath and Detonate to its full effect. And from 50 plus mage, it's quite similar to the Scoblin in a way, except for you'll be needing food this time. Now while these guys only give 166 experience per kill, the experience rates are quite high considering. These monsters spawn extremely quickly so you're able to easily dispatch them and continuously dispatch them throughout an hour. Now if you aren't using the ability Regenerate, which is available in Evolution of Combat, I suggest you bring food, trout and salmon should do, but if you have lobsters, that'll be better. Now their weakness is Earth Spells, and as you can tell, I tested an Air Blast, which is a higher magic level and higher damage spell than Earth Bolt, and I was only able to obtain 80,000 experience per hour using Air Blast, while I was able to obtain 113,000 experience per hour using Earth Bolt. As you can tell, this is a significant difference, so utilize your combat triangle when you can. And I also included Encal, which provide pretty good loot for free to play. I was only able to obtain 101,000 experience per hour here, utilizing all the area effect abilities. Now I only suggest targeting Enko if you're going to be utilizing single target abilities, as using area effect will quickly kill you. With prayer, if you do dungeoneering and obtain the Twisted Bird Skull Necklace for 8000 dungeoneering tokens, this gives you the ability to bury bones and obtain prayer points depending on the bone buried. This necklace does require 30 dungeoneering and 30 prayer to equip. Now there are only three methods mentioned in this guide for prayer, as there aren't really many options in free to play. But from levels 1 to 40, I suggest you head over to Lumbridge Swap and participate in an AFK ability that's called the Nexus. If you talk to the NPC that's standing next to the rift in the Lumbridge Swamp, they will give you a bag which you can use on the rift and then on the pillars after you've filled up your bag, and it will give you experience. You get between 1 and 24 experience per siphon here, and it could take you a couple of hours up to a couple of days depending on how much you AFK. You can only achieve 37,224 prayer experience here, which can get you from level 1 to 40 prayer. 
The next method for 40 plus prayer is Lumbridge Catacombs, which requires a quest a blood pack. The target will be Warp Cockroaches again, which drop bones. Now, testing rates assuming you get 750 kills per hour while burying, you can achieve 3,375 experience per hour. As you can tell, free to play prayer is quite difficult to level up. So for those people that actually have 99 prayer and free to play Iron Man, I give you a thumbs up. Now the last method in this guide for 40 plus prayer is to head over to the Edgefield dungeon and kill hill giants, which drop big bones. Now these bones provide an experience of 15 per bone buried. Now you can use whatever combat style you want here, but I suggest using evolution of combat magic and air spells as that is their weakness. You can obtain up to 6,700 experience, assuming you kill 460 of them an hour. Furthermore, you can attack boss giants, ice giants, lesser demons or greater demons for their respective bones or ashes. But due to their levels, the experience rate for prayer would actually be significantly lower than killing hill giants. So I believe hill giants is one of the fastest methods in free to play. This is the end of our guide for combat in free to play. We hope you have learned something from our guide, and if you did, you can always send a message to us here or in game using our RSN, LemOrange1. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to this guide, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye!